got a bit of a retro repair today. We've got ourselves an iPhone 6. This one is actually one that's been here before. It had a battery replacement, a couple of other things, but now it's turned up dead. And the first thing that I did was pop it open, uh, check the battery. The battery seemed fine, but uh, it seems like it's got a short on the logic board. So hopefully we'll be able to fix this up because the person does want their data. Guess we'll see how we go. So after we opened up the iPhone, you can see I replaced this back in um, October last year. And I'm just using the DT880, which unfortunately you can't buy anymore. But incidentally, I will be making boards to simulate this device. Hopefully it will turn into an actual product. So we plug this in. And immediately we get a 3 amp consumption. So it's pretty crazy. Somewhere in there, we've got ourselves a very hard short. So we'll get the logic board out and see what we can find. We're going to use the cheats method, and that is to bring out the thermal camera. Now, obviously, it's not strictly a cheating method. It's just a very quick and easy way of finding out where our heat is coming from. But it's not necessarily going to give us the answer, but at least give us a guide. Turn on the power. And immediately it goes right to the bottom here. Alright. I'm just not sure whether it's top or bottom. Okay, it's pretty severe down there. So we'll have a look under the microscope and see what we find. It could also be a bit of misdirection. It's entirely possible all that heat is actually from the cable connection. So in this case, what we'll probably best do is take the shield off. One of the easiest ways of taking the shield off is just simply to let gravity do most of the work. Well, I've got to say, there's nothing obvious, and um, that's a little bit of a bad sign. But now it makes me start to wonder if the heat indeed was from simply the large amount of current passing through the connector. Power on. Alright, that's an interesting story. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Because the shield was on before, we couldn't see what was going on. Unfortunately, that does look like it's actually heating up on the um, PBAT, PP bus MOSFET. So it's actually a little bit of a lie, potentially. So it's heating up on that blue chip in the middle there, but I suspect that is merely a symptom It is not the culprit. Our culprit lays elsewhere. If we have a look at the board view and the schematic, we'll have a look at that area. So this here is the chip Q1403. And as you can see, it links the VCC main with the battery. So that is heating up because there is actually a short elsewhere, which is unlikely the VCC main. And that could be one of many things. At this point, we're going to have to look at voltage injection, which is not the most ideal thing, but sometimes you just got to do it. Oop, that's a concern. Did you see that it was warming up over here? Here we go, that is a problem. Essentially the problem we have here is the Wi-Fi module is faulty. So we need to remove that, and, or at least it seems that way, unless that cap there is cracked, which is very unlikely. But yeah, it appears to be a fault in the module. So I'm going to go 360 and 30% air. I 
guess the most crucial measure at this point is, do we still have a shore? And we no longer have a shore, so that's good. One of the first things we will check to see if it has a current drawer, even when it's not turned on. Because what was happening before, of course, we would plug this in and immediately, as soon as the power was turned on this device, we would see a lot of current flowing through. But now, hopefully, we just see maybe one or two milliamps and nothing more. And fortunately, that is the case. You can see, we're drawing zero. It's a good sign. And we have the, let's see if the touch works. It does. So we'll be able to recover the data from this one now. We'll just use the port, the lightning port, and do a backup with 3U tools or something similar to that. There really isn't any point taking the risk of putting a new Wi-Fi chip on at this point. It's better to do a backup first. It's better to do a backup first and then proceed with the next level of risk, which would be to put another Wi-Fi chip on there if you wanted to do a phone-to-phone if you want to do a phone. I'll oh, shut up, Pee Wee. Honestly, the Pee Wee's around here, crazy. Anyway, all fixed. We're done. See you later.